All right, good afternoon enthusiasts. Uh, I've had some time to play with the uh, ASI 2600 monochrome and uh, I didn't do any like serious long big projects, okay? Because I wasn't interested in showing you a beautiful picture and spouting poetry about astrophotography. We, we don't care about that crap. We wanna know if it's a good camera. I jumped around to different types of targets, uh, different configurations. Uh, I, I did some work at f10. I did some work with the Hyperstar at f whatever that is, 1.9, 1.8. And uh, I used some different filters, uh, an Optolong L Pro, a uh, hydrogen alpha filter. Um, so I kind of just did a bunch of short shots, you know, two hours at the most of integration, just to get an idea of uh, what this camera can do. And uh, I, I, I did some stress testing on it. I kept the cooler running at, you know, negative 20 Celsius for a week straight. Uh, I warmed it and cooled it repeatedly, uh, you know, just to beat on it a little bit because I, I'm, I'm interested in putting my name on this thing and telling you whether or not you should buy it. So yeah, we'll, we'll beat on it a little bit. Um, haven't had any problems. I've thrown everything I could at this thing software wise, different things trying to communicate it with it at once, you know, downloading an image as fast as you can while you take another exposure, you know, just, I, I threw everything I could at it to try to get it, this thing to trip up and I couldn't. It just, it performed very well. No problems with any types of software. I use Nina, APT, Fire Capture, uh, SharpCap Pro, you know, the ASCOM driver worked really well. Uh, so no problems using it at all haven't had any goo drip onto the sensor so they seem to have fixed that problem haven't had any frost build up and there have been some wild swings it was it's been very cold and pretty temperate pretty moderate i mean it's been up to 45 during the day and uh you know 15 at night um haven't had any frost build up on the on the protecting whatever that front glass plate is. Haven't had any frost because it's got a, a built-in heater. So I haven't had any condensation or frost buildup. That's been good. Um, tonight, we're gonna have a few more hours of clear skies, I think. So I'm going to do, um, so I'm gonna get some luminance on M81 and M82 um, because I haven't tried the Optolong L Pro with the Hyperstar. I was using it at F10. I haven't used it with the Hyperstar. And I'm interested at, the the clipping because when i i did it with my color camera i think i think there were some issues with the with the light angle and the uh you know the the transmission bandwidth on the l pro and i think it i think it was not performing very well um so i need to do some more tests there uh but yeah we're gonna grab some more luminance data tonight and uh, i'll have something to show you hopefully you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna love this. Uh, some of the stuff, I'm not even using darks, no bias, no nothing. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to show you. So we'll shoot some more tonight. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, okay, I, I read somewhere that you should try to center your corrector plate before using the Hyperstar. And that, that's a story. I, I, I couldn't get the Hyperstar off. It was stuck, seized on like a, like a mofo because I put it on when it was 15 degrees out. And of course it's nice outside now. So I'm sure the temperature differential seized it on there like crazy. Uh, so I, I had to take the corrector plate off, to take the whole corrector plate off and put it in the freezer and uh, get it to cool, <laughs> get it to cool off before those threads would come loose. And I, it was to the point where I was going to damage it if I tried to force it. No, but, but I cooled it off in the freezer for about 30 minutes and then it came right apart. So um, you got to watch that. Watch your threads. Uh, you should put some super, a little bit of, just a little tiny bit of super lube. Get on with it. So let's take a look at our result. Um, the first configuration I used it in was F10. I just put it right on the back of my edge. 
HD to the uh, Optolong L Pro filter and uh, got I think this was about ended up stacking about six hours of five minute exposures at unity gain so this is 100 gain uh, 50 offset and you can see it looks it looks pretty good um yeah and this i applied flats to this excuse me i took flats because there was so much dust on this filter it looked like a dunkin donut shop back there it was ridiculous so this has flats, but no darks and bias. And oh my God, if you can hear my kids, they're going berserk out there. I think they're watching Home Alone, but they think it's hilarious. It is. It's a good, it's hilarious. But anyways, so this has flats applied to it. No darks, no bias, and it's pretty clean. It would look better with darks and bias. But it's, it's not entirely necessary here. Um... Yeah, really, that, uh, that f you know, 14 stops of dynamic range is really getting shown off here by the tremendous detail it's picking up in the dust here. And yeah, this is like five, five or six hours of exposure, of integration on that. I then took um, about five hours of color in, uh, in my DSLR and blended it with that luminance frame I just showed you and got this um, it's not it, I was more or less just testing the method you can see where the DSLR stars were bloated there's so there's orange halos around the stars in this finished image but other than that it looks really good had to fudge that guy a little bit he was kind of ugly but but anyways, I mean it's it's a great image I'll, for just being you know for just monkeying around and testing it. So that's that's first light with the ASI 2600, um, about 10 hours integration total, 10 or 11 for uh, luminance and color. Uh, the next thing I did was put the hyperstar on and try to figure out how to the my backspacing is wrong and the collimation is off. So this doesn't look that great but you get the idea okay this was the max fr six nanometer hydrogen alpha filter from astronomic with the hyperstar and uh this is like an hour and a half of integration two minute exposures on the hyperstar and an hour and a half worth of those and it just stacks and it's incredible um you can see yeah the stars are screwed up looking because it was not not adjusted but you know you get the idea of its capabilities and I'll show you in the uh, in the next image how good the stars look once it's dialed in but yeah I mean zoomed way in you can see just wonderful subtle details with that 14 stops of dynamic range I mean that's that's really really lovely um, I wish I would have had the time to adjust it. And this is, this is no flats, no darks, no bias. Um, that extremely fast system with the better matching for the pixel scale, uh, really, really made it look nice. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a, that's a hydrogen alpha, the max FR filter. I've got a set of those coming. I've, I've got the hydrogen and sulfur. I'm waiting on the oxygen. Uh, once those come in, I'm going to do a, a, a project with those three filters and do a review on them. But if the hydrogen alpha is any indication, it's they're going to be beautiful. Um, so yeah, waiting on those filters. But look, that's the HA, and then I used that as an illuminance, and then took some color with my DSLR on the Hyperstar and blended it into this. And I, I think that looks pretty nice. So, I mean, yeah, the stars are hideous, of course, but the the detail is really nice. I've never even seen this little string of pearls, like the, this perfectly straight little line of globules. I've never seen that before. And that camera plus on the Hyperstar is picking up really, really nice detail. I 
I can't, co I mean, except for complaining about the stars, I can't complain about this image at all. And this was two hours of color. So two hours of color plus, uh, you know, an hour and a half of hydrogen alpha. And we got that out of the camera because it's such low noise. Um, yeah, there's no, there's nothing, no, no calibration applied to this. Just all the lights stacked. And uh, yeah, it came out beautifully. Now, using the Optolong L-Pro filter, the next project I did, um, I wanted to see how quickly we could pick up the uh, integrated flux nebula around M81 and M82. Um, so the next thing I did was use the L-Pro. And you can see the vignetting with the L-Pro was really bad, so I ended up having to use flats on this. And the flats would not work without being calibrated with darks and flat darks. So I had to end up taking a full set of calibration frames for this quick project. Um, but I want to show you this. This was at Unity Gain, a 4 minute exposure. And this was at 100 Gain. A four, or zero gain, I'm sorry, zero gain with a four minute exposure. And look at how much more subtle the core is. In Uni, on Unity Gain, it blew it out in four minutes. And at zero gain, it was, it's a lot more subtle. So, you know, you, you get that really deep well depth at zero gain. And you can uh, really just shoot for the stars. Pardon my pun. No, don't pardon the pun. That's a good pun. You can shoot for the stars with your dynamic range. And, uh, you know, at Unity, you're going to be blowing bright stuff out. But at zero gain, you, you can really get some subtle detail in there. And, uh, anyways, I, I ended up getting, I think about it was about two hours. Two hours worth of four minutes. Now, before I show you this, realize... That it is stretched to hell because I just wanted to see if I was. Wow, I ate some M&Ms and they're making me burp a lot. Um, the integrated flux nebula. I wanted to see if it was picking it up, so I, you know, I stretched, stretched the bejesus out of it. But yeah, so after two hours of those with a full set of flats, darks, and flat darks applied, um, clearly, yeah, I mean, you're really, really picking up the integrated flux nebula out there. And that's lovely, you know. And, uh, you know, this this isn't blown out beyond all belief. I mean, with, with more time on this, this would be a really lovely picture. And then, you know, we go and add color to it. Um, this is slightly blown out right here. We're at 9906. Nine but, yeah, you know, even stretched this hard, it's really not completely blown out. So yeah, the dynamic range on that camera is pretty remarkable. And picking up that much of the Flux Nebula with two hours of integration, I think is remarkable. Uh, but yeah, depending on whether or not you need flats, you might not even need to shoot calibration frames with this camera. And it was really, really clean. And I think that's all I had to show you. But yeah, that was my first two weeks of playing with this filter. I, I really like this. I think that's lovely. The color's not great, but that's that's color from a DSLR. So we're not going to be too picky. I, this this area right here, I just love it. I think that's so pretty. Okay, maybe I will spout poetry. No. Anyways, clear skies, everybody. Amazing camera. I'm trying to think if there's anything I need to tell you about it. I did just uh, remember something I needed to tell you. When I got the camera... Um, the first night I used it, everything looked great. Second night I used it, it was obviously tilted really badly. The uh, some of the, the stars on one side of the frame were way out of focus, uh, and I checked the tilt plate, and it was completely loose. It was like flopping. So you're gonna want to check your tilt plate on your camera, uh, tighten it down, and then you'll have to adjust it, obviously. But yeah, that was that was the only thing I I, I can remember. It's a great great camera. And if you get it, it will serve you well. And I can't wait to get some more Clear Skies. So Clear Skies to you too. We'll talk to you next time. That's the ASI 2600 Monochrome. It's a winner.